I say to actors a lot of the time is we're also nervous. Like if we're if we've got a director in the room and you know we've got a day that we've created for that director on our taste and our who we like as actors, um, you know, we've set that up for them. And, you know, the first day in, in a room with a director, you're like, this could be, they might hate everyone that we that we liked or they might not, you know? So really we, my, my one piece of advice for actors is to remember that we're on the same side, you know? Um, and we are, we like, we're not this, we're not that scary person coming into the room. We, we're kind of connecting and we trust you to bring that into the room. And we've, we've trusted in your ability as an actor and, and that you're right for that role. Um, so it, it's it's not, it's never a, a one-off against each other. We're always kind of, um, we're always egging you on, you know, and, and, and wanting you to be um, good and great as you are. Hi guys, welcome to this episode of The Ash Taba Show. Today I'm joined by Amy Rain Jackson, who has worked with a veritable who's who in the casting world. She's been involved in projects such as Alex Garland's Devs, Mindy Kaling's Four Weddings and a Funeral, and the Apple TV shows Suspicion and Trying. She works as casting associate to the legendary Amy Hubbard, and I'm sure she's gonna have some amazing insights for us based on all of her experience. So Amy Rain Jackson, welcome to the show. Oh, hi. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, good. I'm good. Good in this weird, weird time, as we said, we mentioned, um, but surviving, trying to, trying to keep, you know, keep positive, keep busy, keep reaching out to people, connecting and, and doing as much as you can. But You've I'm been rampant for that, which I say in the nicest way, because, you know, I've seen on social, you're like getting involved with as much as you can. You're trying to help and answer questions. And I think that's really amazing because, you know, we're all going through a processing period with what's happening in our personal lives. So, you know, kudos to you for doing that and, and for trying to give back and help other people out. I think it's awesome. Yeah, no, no. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not, it, it, everyone's lost work and everyone's kind of on a standstill at the moment. So it, it's, I think everyone, you know, Faye and Sophie setting it up, the initiative of we, we Audition and all of that was so brilliant in terms of being like, what do we do now? And, and them kind of setting that up led us, everyone to get involved. And um, it just makes our, you know, unemployed kind of work schedule at the moment kind of, worthwhile as well and and for us as meeting as many actors as possible is super useful so um i think it's it's helping everyone out really which is yeah and i think for us actors it's a good reminder of the fact that like put the labels aside we're all humans like you guys freelance just as much as we do we're all getting the hit here and i think you know if people needed perspective i think this is a great perspective provider on that front yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, I, th I think, and I think we all have to remember that we all are on on the same side, and and you know, work together through it to get to kind of to make it less weird and less kind of lonely and isolated. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Well, look, I I think I probably glossed over, I guess, sort of your background at the beginning there. So it might be nice to sort of get into. I suppose your backstory a little bit, you know, what's the origin story of Amy Rain Jackson and, and how did you get to, you know, doing all the casting projects you've done and getting to where you are right now? Yeah, so, um, yeah, it was very nice to hear a nice uh, introduction from you. I've never, I've never had that proper introduction before. So. Uh, like I said, it's the most formal thing you're going to get out of me all day. It was great. Um, it helps my ego a little bit. <laughs> happy, happy to help. Um, yeah, no. Um, I, so I actually started in your shoes, as as um, I think a lot of casting uh, casting directors have have experienced kind of this, behind, being behind being behind the scenes an actor or mm. performer. Um, so I I kind of went. My route was I went to Leeds University, and I studied theatre there, and then that led me on uh, to I, I kind of graduated from that, and I thought I wanted definitely wanted to perform, and that was the route I wanted to go down. Uh, my dad's an actor as well, so. Um, he, I kind of just knew the industry so well and have grown up with it. Um, so I think, I think it was just something that I knew that I'd do. And then um, I, I, and then I went to drama school and I actually studied musical theatre um, okay. um, for a year, but kind of just, just 
decided for me, um, musical theatre wasn't for me. And I loved performing and I loved, I was, I was more of a dancer. So I loved that side of it. But I, I kind of, it, it, the, just the lifestyle for me, like the auditioning and everything. I mean, I, I take my hat off to all, everyone, you guys who do it, because it was, it was just a hard thing for me to kind of keep motivated. What and are you I, talking about? It's so <laughs> secure. It's, it's, most, it's so secure. Well, you know, all, 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 yeah, I got it all sorted. No, it is just amazing. And, and it's, it's, I think I just found myself after a few years, just realizing that I was working and not working what in what I wanted to do, you know, and in what I wanted to to do. And I and I think I just the structure for my mental health for for I think just didn't really sit with me. And I really wanted to stay in the industry mm. and uh and and actually wanted to support actors and kind of figured out that I kind of wanted to to be on that other side um and and kind of nurture actors, see talent and and find talent and fit it into places. Um, so that's kind of where where I kind of started. I, I started uh, a little while. I did. Um, um, I was a, I worked as an assistant for an agent uh, first of all, and I loved it. And I loved. I used to just be really bad though, because I used to just chat to everyone on the phone for ages and like did not get my work done. So ever you know, I, I was the one kind of just chatting and just wanting, and they want wanted that. So I, I was the kind of that kind of side of the office. Um, and and I think it, it, it's such an it's an amazing job, but it, it, it was it was quite admin heavy for me. So I think I just wanted to find uh, more more of a creative side to the industry. And so obviously with casting, there is still that admin side, right? There is a big office based part when you're deep in having to do deal memos and stuff, I'm sure. But you get the other flip where you can read and I guess satiate your creative background and, and yeah. come into the rooms, right? Yeah, definitely. And that's, I mean, it, it, you now where I am, uh, you know, in my, in my career, I'm, I, I'm so much more able to be in the room and, and that's kind of the admin side. I luckily have kind of assistants that can help me. And, and it means that you can really kind of, that part is the bit that I love of being in the room, meeting actors and kind of just trying, seeing how different everyone can be with their approaches to characters. And, you know, just, just that, that side of it, it excites me so much being in the room and seeing, seeing, seeing people, um, perform yeah i guess especially when you have that background yourself right because you know you get to kind of play with the actors that come in and give them different readings based on what they're giving you and for the actor it's it's equally great to have someone who who is a great reader who knows how to actually give something in that way so it's it then feels more like a collaboration than it does feel like a job interview you know yeah, exactly definitely um and i and i think that you know anyone that doesn't give actors that time that and that kind of I remember from going into auditions being so nervous and of course you're nervous going into auditions so for me it's so it's super important to like make you guys feel as comfortable as as possible because we're not we're not going to get your best work if if you're not um so so that's something that I kind of wanted to strive towards when I was casting and was when I was in the room yeah, that's important. And I think, you know, I think all of us always have nerves. I think even when you've done it a zillion times, there's going to be nerves there. But it's just having that extra person on your side to feel like you're not going in this. It's an, I think there's that thing where actors, we have to go through a period of trial and error and stop realizing that we're not trying to prove anything to you. Yes, yes. And, you and know? I say to actors a lot of the time is we're also nervous. Like if we're, if we've got a director in the room and mm -hmm. you know, we've got a day that we've created for that director on our taste and our, who we like as actors, um, you know, we've set that up for them. And you know, the first day in, in a room with a director, you're like, this could be, they might hate everyone that we, that we liked or they might not, you know? So, really we my, my one piece of advice for actors is to remember that we're on the same side you know um and we are we like we're not this we're not that scary person coming into the room we, we're kind of connecting and we trust you to bring that into the room and we've, we've trusted in your ability as an actor and and that you're right for that role um so it, it's it's not it's never a, a one-off against each other we're always kind of um we're always egging you on you know and and, and wanting you to be um good and great as you are yeah and i think it's super interesting to talk about the other side of it which is the fact that you guys work with directors and producers that have hired you or networks or studios 
And I think a lot of actors do get that, but perhaps for those that don't or maybe aren't fully tuned into it, it might be good for you to talk a little bit about what to us might seem like the other side. You know, like actors always look at it as though casting is like the gatekeeper to this hidden magical Narnia kingdom, which is complete nonsense. Um, yeah. but, but could you maybe talk a little bit about the non-actor side and more about, I guess, the dynamic that casting has with networks and directors and producers? Yeah, I mean, our kind of, our, yeah, our, I mean, initially, do you want me to kind of talk through the process a little bit or, or of the beginning of when we get kind of a script sent to us? Or? I think that might be useful because it gives context as like how long you've been working on this before actors even get involved. Yeah, great. Um, so yeah, I mean, we get scripts so far in advance, like uh, really far in advance and, and they might not even be projects that have kind of been, um, have the money attached to them and things. So we, we kind of get these very initial scripts. And uh, from that point on, um, we, you know, we, we have to, first of all, do break, breakdowns of all, all the, um, all of the all of the scripts so we go through all of the script and break it down into each character and how uh, how many lines they have how many speaking scenes um and then we kind of just have to we then start with the 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 main the main roles who have more you know recurring series regular roles um and that's when our our kind of collaboration with the director uh, specifically and the producer kind of start is that we start kind of sending them lists first of all of actors that we love and that we think would be right for that role um and so all of that process is is kind of back and forth saying oh no we don't think they're right we don't think and, and you know they might be offer only um for for the initial stages so you know um all of that um is a back and forth between us and trying to work out each other's tastes and and, and all of that um and until we start getting some our favorite one to offer or, or you know a favorite one to start bringing into the room and see if they can read if they'll read for us um and that that is when until we're in the, in the room um that is where we start kind of knowing fully what the director how the director works and how the director how much time the director uh, likes to spend with an actor and all of that is kind of just learning along on, along the way um and yeah and then it, it kind of just goes through through that process through the roles and that's pretty much it in an in a in, in a condensed nutshell for for us okay. out there I think, exactly. um, do you often get times maybe where a director or producer has a set idea of who named actor or certain actors they'd want attached, maybe because yeah. it might help them with financing or whatever yeah. it might be. And then, you know, what happens when you don't either A, agree or B, can't source that actor for them? You know, how do you navigate that? There must be politics. Yeah. So how do you navigate the politics of this if you can speak to it? There are, there are always mixed, we've got, you know, not only the director and the producer, we've also got the network. So the network is the one, are the ones that are probably going to want um, a, a certain level of name attached to that project to get the money. Um, so the battle is of kind of trying to like mix all of these people's opinions. We're the realistic ones and have to kind of as much as we can promise all of these things, we also have to be realistic of whether that actor, you know, is going to do it for this amount of money or whether that actor is actually, um, you know, going to say yes or no. Um, and sometimes we have to just play it through and we give our advice and, uh, you know, even knowing that we've, it's not going to really probably work out but we we, we go with it and you know they, they turn it down and then we can kind of go back to the drawing board but a lot of the time it's the director is you know his it's his create his creation and his sure. creative um decision is is huge and um and we, we can't ever say no or yes necessarily we have to kind of say oh yeah but have you thought about this person or you know have you sort of thought about this person so it's kind of more of a negotiation and kind of giving other options um to that yeah i mean it's it's a collaboration right it's like anything within the industry there's the actor alone or the director alone or the editor alone doesn't make one amazing project it is all the different ingredients coming together and somehow piecing it together um which i think again coming back to the actor's perspective you know mindset wise is so reassuring when you look at it and go i'm a small piece in a big cog of mm -hmm. which at any given time if i don't get it yeah. and i don't book the job 
yeah. it's probably not down to my self-worth or me not being good enough. And I think, you know, that's a huge one that I don't know how people get over that. For me, it was just time and repetition. Um, I don't know if you have any tips or insights as to how you might suggest actors could get over that mental block beyond just doing it. Uh, yeah, and I think that's one of the hardest things. One of the hardest things is to leave that room and to not be going over and over in your head of whether, why, you know, what's going on. Are they going to? I the one part piece of advice I would have that would perhaps help is is to just kind of have that audition. And I know it's as easy as saying saying it, but leave the room and that's it. You know, you you might think you've messed up or you might think you, you've done what you were meant to do in the room. And, um, and that's, and that's all. And hopefully someone's, you know, given you the support that you need to get it right and feel like you nailed it in that room. Um, but you know, if you go away, as soon as you walk out of that door, try to just kind of, that's it now it's done. I can't change anything that happened in that room right now. I think we have a lot of people who, uh you know then might come back and say oh can we self-tape and do it again and i i think we see the essence of you and whether you're right for that role it's not about whether you you might mess up your lines that doesn't matter it's it's not you're human you you've been given lines to learn that we're not going to judge you on that um it is just about it comes down to just whether they feel right for that role and that's all it all it is um yeah. I think that's key. The two things you said there are words that stood out to me are essence and feeling, which mm -hmm. are very intangible and they're subjective too, right? Like that's the other thing. Yeah. Um, but you can't really control that. And yeah. so I think, again, if we all look at it from an actor's point of view of, I can't control it. I just have to be me yeah. and show up as me and let the chips fall. And yeah. it is a my, I know it's so easy to say it and they, people could listen to this and go, great. How do I do that? I genuinely, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I remember Al Pacino, I read something, I think it was in his, in his biography where he said he loved when he knew he had an audition because he framed it as it's my chance to play. It's yeah. my chance to act. And I think maybe if that helps anyone, that's Definitely. maybe a way to frame it. That's a brilliant, uh, brilliant, um, way to look at it. And, and, and the thing is you, you, you've won already by getting in that room, like, you know, the, the amount of submissions we get for, for roles is, you know, there's so many, there are so many actors out there. So you, you getting called into that room, that should be your kind of set, almost celebration of being like, that's it. Now I can put all my, all of my um, tricks that I've been learning and all of my uh, discipline into just going into that room and just doing the best I can and, and, and enjoy it more of, you know, it is playing, enjoy that moment of being in the room. Absolutely. I think that's, that's a nice segue to sort of follow on questions that I have, but they do overlap with some of the questions that have been sent in. So what I might do is, is pick some of those out. Um, you know, what you spoke about there was the idea of, of practice and tools and the discipline you've been putting in until you get called in. Um, you know, a few of the questions that have come in uh, were around like advice as to what to do and how to be proactive during lockdown. Um, Kate Jones asked that, for example, um, or B2 Thomas also asked something similar about in these Corona times, how can mm -hmm. we be proactive? Um, what would your advice be on that? Should it be any different during this lockdown as to any other given day out of lockdown? Should we be practicing anyway? During the yeah the one to ones I've been having that has been a, like a huge like ongoing ongoing question because it, it's a weird one because the industry shut down so there's not really I mean some people might be into doing prep and we were doing prep until kind of recently and kind of continuing it but it's a weird one because people are saying oh but maybe I shouldn't contact casting directors because they are that you know we're told not to or we're not meant to email them but i i mean again this is like completely everyone has their own opinion always in, in casting but for, for me for example i know that i've been having time to read people's emails a bit more and um and hopefully trying to respond as much as possible and i think i think the main thing is to is to uh, your proactivity now although it's a weird time is to, it's to be even more you know and and try and find kind of ways of kind of reaching out and and rather than kind of just sending an email maybe just linking something together of what you're what someone's casting or what someone might be working on or what series might be coming up um, that they've worked on so kind of trying to be 
think ahead of the game and kind of get their attention like that almost. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there's so much creativity going on in terms of creating own work from your from your house. So people have been doing monologues and kind of putting them up on Twitter or people have been doing kind of little comic scenes and things to entertain people. And, and we have more time to be looking at online like social media and we have more time to, to view these things so um i think just stay create creative and pro as proactive as possible really in these times yeah i couldn't agree more and i think if i'm adding my personal bit onto that if i may i think that should be an ongoing thing in or out of these times um you know i i think making your own work and being creative should be something we should be doing whether we're having auditions coming or not. I know it's made a huge difference, you know, when I've done it in my life. And I just think for me, it's always like the analogy of a painter. Like if Picasso only painted to make money, he never would have painted a damn thing in his life. Yeah. I think he painted to paint. And I think as an actor, there's so much that this period maybe is teaching us that we can, we can write a script or put on something with actor friends over Zoom or get on something like we audition. I was speaking to Richard the other day and talking to him about how people can just get on there and practice. Yeah, you could yeah. do a self tape practice, just pick some scripts and sides and just do it on there or do it with a friend over Skype yeah. and just hone that muscle every day so that when you're busy again and you don't have the time to answer our emails as much, yeah. um, we come in and we're, we've got sharpened tools and we're good to go. Yeah. That's the, that's the thing. And, and the, the more you can be doing that. And, um, I don't know about the difference between kind of, I think here we aren't as, um, we aren't as um, used to kind of attending classes when people leave drama school and um, America you can kind of continually continually tra train and it's it's kind of an ongoing process you never really kind of stop learning and stop practicing and really like the, the more practice you can have as an actor and the more you know just it just becomes sec you know second nature and those nerves are kind of getting less and less um, yeah i think definitely um creating your own work as well because if it's not coming to you then just put it out there you know and you never know that's the other thing you just don't know where it might lead i, I am with you on the on the training differences based on the states and here but i do think it's changed here a little bit i do think there are places here that do right. provide ongoing study especially in london um and, and i think that's a nice shift because Drama school is great. I mean, I didn't do it, but I know people that have, and it was great. But it can't be that you just stop after three years no. or four and you know everything. That's no, that's definitely. not the way. Um, okay, so let me pick out a few more questions here. So Melina asked, what is your process when shortlisting actors? And that might vary, I'm sure, from project to project. But is there anything that overlaps with that process for you? Uh shortlisting actors as in in terms of kind of just choosing who to bring in i'm guessing i would assume so yeah. yeah um again it's 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 a really tricky kind of broad broad uh, broad question really but you know the the initial thing is we get for example for a role we'll get on spotlight and we'll get submissions and we see your little kind of headshot and your name and your agent uh, and that's that's it really to start with so so for us uh, looking through that anything that you know us knowing you or knowing you as an actor is obviously going to help but a lot of the times for smaller roles we might not know uh know, know people as much so um just making sure your cv is fully up to date and making sure we see that you've worked recently or um you know you've got a nice kind of you haven't thrown loads of stuff on there um and there's too much kind of overcrowding it we, we see a nice kind of variety of work in each discipline um and a showreel is always going to help. Like I would, I would say that, like a lot of the times when we don't know actors, if they haven't got a showreel, we we just like are scared to take that uh, risk sometimes of of bringing them in without seeing something of their work. So mm. if you haven't got a showreel, use this time to, and I'm sure you a lot of you already know this, but um you know use this time to perhaps just even film a monologue or film film something that you can just put on on up there and so we can kind of reference it and we can see it um it's just super super helpful for us um so that kind of it's a it's a lot of different things that kind of 
help us to spotlight uh, to short shortlist actors and and that's kind of just a few again the proactive thing of just trying to reach out and, and have connections with people so i can go oh yeah i remember i remember that person from a workshop that he might have done or something like that um yeah the spotlight thing is interesting i like i i'd like to go a little bit deeper on that and specifically the, the bit around when you're talking about the resume and and the credits you've listed so um you know i'm sure some people just put everything they've ever done on there would you say people might be better suited to not cherry pick, but almost be a bit more selective with the stuff that's on there and the credits. And um, I don't know if you know of Bonnie Gillespie from the States. She's a business of acting coach. Have you heard of her? Not, I think I've heard of her name. You might've heard of the name. Anyway, so she yeah. talks about this and about having your CV be basically showing the buyers. So you guys, the casting directors, where we want to go, not where we've been and have our credits be indicative of that not necessarily the oh short student film that i did in 2006 yeah, yeah 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 and i completely um get that a lot of sometimes people who are, st are starting out don't have many credits and and they're trying you're trying to build it up and you're trying we we can see that and we can see your reflection of you've just graduated or you know so so that's it's not an important thing necessarily but but yeah that's one thing i say make your cv um, kind of mold it to where what you want to be seen as as an actor you know if you are a stage actor and you've got loads and loads of stage credits but you're really 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 wanting to get into film and tv more perhaps rather than kind of keeping every single stage kind of um, it's brilliant to have so much on there but if you've got a few film film and tv and you kind of wanting to kind of be, be considered a bit more for film and tv then maybe just strip them back a little bit just so mm -hmm. we kind of we want to see those years and see that you've continued to work and that you've kind of been disciplined and you work, you're working and getting the work. But I think molding it to where you want to be and where you want to kind of be uh, seen as an actor is really important. It's like killing your own babies though, isn't it for I us? Know. It's like, it's you want me to do what? That <laughs> film I did when I, what? That was the best thing I've ever done. But yeah. And yeah, that's another thing as, as well in terms of sometimes like sometimes credits that you know, like um, we won't, we, we, we don't, if, if we don't know them or if we, you know, it's not something kind of significant and it's something perhaps a little bit uh, when you were starting out and it's smaller, we kind of, it can't quite give us an indication of, of you as an actor kind of thing. Um, so just be, be disciplined and kind of be picky and choosy. And so say I'm someone who's starting out or doesn't, or been in it for a while, but doesn't have those credits yet with the names per se, but I've got stuff. How could I make some of those stand out and pop more? Would it be things like, say, if the director's known, or maybe if it's gone to a festival that's quite reputable or won awards, would tagging stuff like that on there, if you're able to, even in the description on Spotlight, make, make a difference? Definitely, yeah. Um, and I, a lot of the time, you know, new graduates and people who've just come out will also have their drama school roles as well. Um, so they're, they're so important as well in terms of us seeing what kind of characters you played um, d during your time at drama school. So, um, so you know, something like that will be really in indicative of, of, of who you are as an actor. But also, yeah, like you say, um, write a little description. Um, you know, you've got the little bit on Spotlight just saying, recently appeared in this and won this award or this was chosen and for a, you know nominated for an award for anything like that that can kind of go oh yeah there's something here that that looks interesting to right. us. so final one on, on spotlight it follows on from this so Yvonne Myers asked about your thoughts on putting in additional images or footage next to your headshots and showreel on spotlight so specifically things like stills from projects or maybe footage of um, if you say someone who does combat training, like something like that, or self tape videos, would you put extra snippets or stuff like that on Spotlight, or would you keep it I, off? I think he, with headshots and stuff, you really, um, you know, your main one will be the the one that's obviously used most. Your agent or or you can choose uh, sometimes whether you which photo you suggest you, like you suggest and with. But I would say um, you only need. I think no more than three headshots really on there. I think we kind of, if, if it doesn't jump off the page in the first one of who you are, um, 
maybe give another one that's quite you know a slightly different so we see kind of a different side to you a different quality maybe a lighter side um to you so so feel free to put them up but only do them if they if they are different like sometimes mm -hmm. we can see we can kind of go and check other photos and they're kind of exactly the same and they haven't really kind of helped us much or it might just have like a different hairstyle but the same kind of feel so so kind of just be careful of what that is up there um and it, you know stills from productions and and things like that and ma mainly kind of indicates i guess it sees, sees a different side to you but we don't genuine generally kind of tend to like look at that necessarily Fine. Fine. um again with a showreel as well so you've got the showreel and then you can also add edit added um bits and like footage as well uh, again try and have if you were to have a motion capture showreel that's completely different so feel free to do a motion capture sh showreel and your your jet your your main showreel um generally with like if you were to have a monologue up there um i think just just try try and kind of tell us what to look at um so we might not go on that monologue if you're really proud of that monologue it should be in your showreel um so try to kind of put it all in one place if possible unless they're different disciplines and different skills mm -hmm. you're highlighting mm -hmm. so. what about things like languages or people with different accents that maybe you wouldn't put that in the main showreel in full but say you want to have a little minute clip of you on there for the time that maybe you're casting i don't know the guy who's french or italian would that still make sense to have that on there yeah, definitely, definitely. That that you can definitely put that that as something, or even just you know, again, if in your show role, if you were did have a nice scene in speaking French, then then have that included as well. But yeah, if, if that's fine, that it references really nicely, so we can kind of just say, oh yeah, look, we can see this, and 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 it demonstrates that. Awesome. Um, so pivoting off this slightly, um, Saffron Beck and also Pamela Dwyer have asked similar sort of questions. They said. You know, what advice would you then give to someone looking to get their first TV credit uh, or a few lines? Um, in Pamela's example, she's talking about how she's been away from the game for a while. Um, she's got the training, but it's just, it's getting on that first rung of the ladder. It's a tough question, but. Yeah. I mean, it is a tough question. Again, um, you, it's just, the, the show reel is going to be I, I, like even, I, I like Pamela's saying if she hasn't if she hasn't got any credits yet, they might be hard to put together a show reel, but try to try to figure a way of just getting something up there so we can see you. Um practice kind of doing self tapes and and, and so so you we we need to see how you translate how it translates on screen and, and just try and kind of to tune into those discipline the discipline and the skills of of, of translating things into screen because they might be slightly different you know they're slightly different from for mm -hmm. you as an actor um and i think being going to as many kind of talks and as many i do a lot of casting workshops and i know that actors sometimes have different um different opinions on casting workshops um but i think they are a really good way of meeting cast people who work in casting um and they um i i would not ever ask you to pay um loads of money you shouldn't have to pay loads of money i don't know how how, how much like 30 pounds or whatever but oh, yeah. i i have often done them and there's been some people who have um, want to get into film and TV. And I have actually kind of then brought them in, got them to self tape um, from that because in, in my head, um, I'm working on something and I've just done a casting workshop. I'm gonna, if you're right for it, then right for a role, then I'll get you to self tape or I'll bring you in. So they often can lead to getting cast and things or getting on to casting directors' radars, you know? And then, my, oh, sorry, just a uh, ruined assault. my whole... <laughs> mild, mild assault. <laughs> um, you know, um, so that, I've forgotten where I was now. I like how animated you were that you literally smacked your laptop just halfway. <laughs> Exactly. Go to workshops, connect a network with people, for God's yeah. sake. It's true though, it's half the game it, right. with yeah. anything, with anything you do, not just this. Yes. So it, it, again, it's that how proactive can I be, and how if I really want to work in film and TV, how can I how can I get more on people's radars and get more people to know me? And I think again, it goes back to that: make your own work, yeah. especially at the beginning. You know, I mean, at any stage. But if you have nothing, make something and show people what you can do, and then at least that way, if you think you fit in, I don't know, 
say you think you'd fit in a homeland type of, of show, film something that's of that ilk, yeah. put that up there, and then go to the people who cast those types of shows and say, look, this is me in that world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It may not get anywhere, but it's better than, it's better than just sitting on your hands and waiting, right? Um, all right, Amy, look, I, I do have some more questions that people have sent in, but I'm also now seeing that a bunch of people are here waiting. So instead of making them wait, let's bring them in. If we have t one at a time, I'm going to bring them in. If there's time at the end, I might get back to some of these. Um, here is where I see if this tech thing works or if it all goes to hell. So let's see if this works the way I want to. Hopefully. Ryan is going to join in any second. Yay. Did that work? It did. It did work. Can you I can Awesome. Uh, Hiya. Hello. Hey. Sorry Welcome. about that. Welcome. My audio on. How are you doing, Ashley? Hi, Amy. We're all good. Thank oh. you for joining. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. No, you're We've been rambling away and then I saw people oh. were in the gr in the waiting room, so I thought let's bring you guys in and and get to what this is about. So Cool. Um, what's, what's your, what's your question for, for Amy? Um, cool. First of all, Amy, I just want to say your talk at Surviving Actors a couple of months ago was brilliant. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. it was, I loved how you had pages and pages of notes and you were just like bashing it out as quick as you could. It was like an explosion of information, but it was so useful. I, I, like I said before that, I was so nervous about it. I've never done anything like that. And I, I was so prepared with my notes, but I felt like I'd actually written too much. And everyone else was like, I haven't got enough to say. And I was like, oh God, I've got too much. So we're like, no, brilliant. Like everyone around, there was like steam coming off people's phones, trying to like write it all down. It was really funny. No, I thought you were natural. It was really good. Um, so I kind of like briefly met you then on the way out. I asked you about the offenders, but you were kind of being zoomed Bristol. out. Bristol, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm from a small town near Bristol. So, um, yeah, I guess there's so many things that have gone on hold at the moment. I don't know where yeah, you are. That has gone on hold as well, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, such a shame. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of like just say hi. Ashley, thanks for having me. And I wanted to ask you, um, you probably get, you probably had every question under the sun from actors anyway. So there's probably nothing you haven't been asked. But, um do you or have you auditioned actors um, that are submitted by agents who you don't necessarily know or haven't dealt with before or are kind of new to you or maybe you're a bit like oh I haven't really heard of them you know and I know it's a fairly generic question but um, I asked because I'm sort of was in the process of I'm trying to like try and transition to sort of the next yeah. tier if you like because I've been sort of knocking around for about nine ten years now and um, um, I, I sort of feel like with where I'm at you know I'm, I'm, I haven't had the opportunity to get in the room with with somebody like yourself and the many casting directors who you work with so um, I just wondered you know I know you probably get thousands of submissions but yeah how often do you sort of deal with new agents or we, do. We, we definitely do um, deal with new agents. I think um, obviously we've got the agents that we have worked with a lot and we know and we kind of trust their judgment and trust who their, their agents are. But there are so many agents out there. Um, we often kind of, as soon as we flag an agency that we meet someone from or we book someone from, we will always kind of have them on our radar of our kind of um, agents, agents that we work with. It kind of yeah. works like that. But um, we definitely like also if you look right for a role, we're not going to we see all the agents come up. So we're not going to discriminate against an agency um, if you kind of feel right. And if we look to your show role and you feel right for that role. Yeah, um, I think it, I think it just it's a tricky one because obviously the 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 more established the agents, the the more we will kind of respond to them, and yeah, um, the easier we kind of have that rapport and they can kind of push people. But those agents have to kind of work harder, I guess, to get on our radar. And it's the agent's job to kind of perhaps flag a little bit more their clients to us or, or push their push their clients to us so we kind of know them. Things that you can do, though, um, is we've been talking about kind of being proactive and, and trying yeah. to be as proactive as possible and trying to connect with lots of people, uh, trying to kind of, you know, 
attendees or workshops, casting workshops and meet someone face to face because that way, regardless of the agent, we will know you as an actor. So if you're submitted and we see you um, on Spotlight, we'll be like, oh yeah, that was that really, you know, she was really good at my casting workshop the other day or, you know, so that kind of already gives you a one up. It doesn't really matter what agency you're with on that, on, in, in that, in that kind of sense. Yeah. It's definitely, it's, it's kind of, it, perhaps you have to work a little bit harder to get on our radar, but we would definitely kind of still, we, we would, I, I, I would, when I go through Spotlight, I'm not kind of looking at agents necessarily. I'm looking at people and actors and, yeah. and who I know and who I, who I kind of trust as an actor. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. So you don't not bring people in based on who the representation. Yeah. No. It's be. Yeah or not and that's how we create uh new relationships with new agents and you know agents that might not have been around uh, they have some brilliant actors as well so we have to kind of keep learning and keep changing because otherwise we're just going to churn the same people out all the time you know yeah we need those new people on our on our books and our, on our kind of um radar yeah that's really good to know i kind of challenge my um my agent uh a fair bit just with i know that this is happening or i met this casting director here and there or i had this chat with so and so can you kind of follow up and stuff yeah. i'm kind of i've got to the point where i'm a bit afraid to keep doing that because he's kind of displayed a, a little bit of annoyance at my kind of like eagerness but it's it's purely because i've um personally um and I'm not going to go on about it because it's become like my story, but I've, I've not had a great deal of luck with agents in my career. So I've always been proactive in getting myself work. Yeah. Perhaps I haven't been very good at like letting go of the purse strings a little bit, if you know what I mean. But, yeah. um, and, and, you know, it's your, it's your, um, yeah, you have, as much as the agent is there to work for you, sometimes you've got agents that will work more for you, but you are the, the, catalyst to kind of starting your you know you care the most about you yeah uh, of course it, like everyone does like essentially uh, yeah yeah it's it's a it's a hard one though when you don't have that kind of respect back i guess of working agents are like relationships though right you have to go through a bunch yeah. i mean i've had three or four before i got to who i'm with and i'm happy with and have a great relationship with but the ones before maybe only fit for that time in your life or sometimes the vibe just doesn't work for you and it's not that they're bad or or good um exactly. And, you know, it might just be a case of maybe find someone who vibes more with you. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is more that in, in this particular case. In, in terms of the person, he's, he's, he's great and stuff. Um, it, yeah, I think it is more of a personal yeah. um, thing. So I think I'll just keep keep plugging away and, um, uh, you know, not, not stalking people, but I'll keep my relationships going and I'll keep plugging yeah. away. But um, hopefully yeah. awesome. uh, get in a room with you soon. Yeah. <laughs> as every other actor is saying but um hey thanks for having me on appreciate it no problem thank you cool thanks. all right lovely to see you awesome bye. see you later raya Good bye ashley bye there we are awesome i'm just checking now what happens do i have to eject people see no this? i'm leaving I'm oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> see ya see you later again yeah, bye bye yeah. Yay. Awesome. Okay. Um, we're on a roll. Let me bring in, let me bring in the next, the next candidate or the next victim. Depends how I want to. Let's bring in Sarah. Hello. Hi. Hello. Sarah. Can you hear us? <laughs> It says okay. you're here. Oh, your audio's coming yeah. on. There we go. I can hear. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Hi, welcome. Hi, Ash. Thank you for doing this. Of course. Well, I'll leave it to you, uh, to, you to, to chat with Amy for a while. What's your question for Amy? Hi, Amy. Hi. Hello. Um, so with everything that's been happening, um, for me, it's been really heartwarming to see, you know, like cast and directors, associates, all kind of being out there and um, helping actors. And I think it brings that sense of that we're all in this together at the moment because we're all kind of on an equal playing field and also just a sense of compassion mm -hmm. that people are having for each other and support. And um, 
I was listening to um, a podcast with Daniel Edwards mm. the other day, and what I found really helpful for me, and, and I guess with seeing a lot more of the casting directors out there, you know, like Vicky Jenkins and Katie Valentine and Hendry are doing their, their mm. lives on social stuff, um, is you get a sense of who they are as people rather mm. than just you know, these mm. casting people that you see as a name or, you know, or, or you get to see briefly in a meeting or something. Mm. Um, and the one I saw with Daniel, he, he was really open and shared, um, you know, things about him. And for me, it was just really helpful because when I, when I um, go to see him or, or someone, you just, as I say, you have, a, you have a better sense of them as a person. Mm -hmm. and, so my question to you, sorry, long-winded, okay. was really what kinds of, you know, throughout your casting journey, um, what have been your challenges or your own personal insecurities you've had to overcome along the way? Mm -hmm. That's throughout it, you know? That's an interesting one because, yeah, you're, you're right in terms of, <clears throat> you know, we're all we're all people we're, you know you have to take the kind of scary casting that I was talking about this earlier with Ashley about um you, you know we're all on the same side we're all we're yeah. all people and uh we're all just human you know so we all have these these connections we also have a tricky kind of career progressions or you know being an actor or being a casting director or being a director all of these things um yeah I think um, a lot of... I find it super interesting to hear people's, yeah. you know, that, that, that story. Yeah, and I mean, I think with my, mine was uh, a lot of the time working as an assistant, you're working yeah. with casting directors yeah. uh, and you're working in a very intense setting. So yeah. um, uh, a lot of the time, like an actor fitting a role and being right for a role, um, as an assistant, I also had to find my, find a casting director who I gelled with and who I um, had the same taste uh, in or as, who I kind of believed in how they worked. And, and that takes a long time. And I, used to, I did a lot of freelancing. So I, I've worked with some brilliant people and kind of worked and sometimes they have their associates in place and their assistants in place. So you kind of, there's no real space apart from being kind of a, a a freelancer on a, per, a, a temporary basis yeah uh, so I think my struggle yeah my, I've had some struggling moments of kind of just figuring out whether I was going to find my kind of home of casting and where I was going to develop and where I was going to kind of progress I guess um and and a, a, I had some tr tricky it's a stressful environment casting so yeah I think a lot of a lot of the time that you know we're under so much pressure and it can be quite stressful um so I think that has been a struggle sometimes because I'm quite a calm person I'm not really I don't really work very well under my boyfriend's uh, not shaking his head over <laughs> <laughs> um and I I don't I, I don't really work well under someone else like being stressed and I, I kind of just go okay I yeah. just, just want to be relaxed and chill and I, I can't have that kind of negative energy it affects me really badly so I think that's been a yeah, that. that's been my main struggle I guess where I've had to kind of learn to find a working relationship that I feel comfortable in and that I kind of feel feel happy and that I'm mm. I can kind of can, can yeah can be happy in, especially when it's such a fast-paced industry right like things change you might have a deal pulled out from under the rug and you got to go back and you're on a deadline so i guess you must have your own personal way of dealing with it as you but I, yeah the team you're with has to have a similar mindset otherwise you're yeah. gonna go nuts it does filter down doesn't it i've noticed that when i've been on different sets you know i've noticed instantly i mean similar to you i'm very aware energetically and when I go somewhere and I can feel and it does you know as much as I try and center I can feel it having an effect on me yes. you know and it's how you deal with that isn't it yeah and figuring out how you can deal with and it, I think at the beginning I was like oh no I just can't deal with it so I'm just gonna I'm gonna go on to something else or you yeah. know whereas actually you kind of have to work through it and find a way of kind of 
there are going to be times where it's stressful, but how do I cope with that? And how do I kind of deal, deal with this stress? And, and it's the same with any discipline, I think. With, with yeah. Definitely. And I think probably people are feeling that so much more at the moment with all the, you know, the external stress that's going on around us all the time. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Interesting question. I like that. <laughs> oh, you know, I've listened to so many different like casting people, and I didn't want to ask the usual actor type question <laughs> that I've heard so many times. And it's interesting to get everyone's different takes on it. You know, it's fine. You're good. I've been asking all the usual actor type <laughs> questions instead, so I've done that for you. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah, for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for taking the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take it easy. Bye. 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 Let's see. You have to wait for the... There. I know. I know. All right. Breather, or are you good to keep on rattling these out? We've got two. You're on a roll. Let's bring in, let's bring in Fernando, because he's going to have a good... I think, if it's the question, I think... Uh, one that might apply to a lot of people. Great. Fernando. Hey. Hello. Uh, put on your video, man. We want to see you. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Hey. Hola. No. ¿Qué hey. ¿Cómo hey. estamos? ¿Qué, qué tal estás? Muy bien. Muy bien. I'm going to stop talking in, in Spanish. It's just showing off. Uh, <laughs> welcome, man. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining. And, and yes, say hi to Amy. What's your, what's your question for Amy Rain Jackson? Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, so uh, the question I made was uh, related to the chances of working in in England with the Brexit situation, especially for Mediterranean actors or uh, mm -hmm. European actors not based in the UK. It was more or less that kind of question. Okay, I mean, you know what? It's it's a, it's one that I I don't really know much about that like whether in terms of kind of whether like policies or whether you're going to be allowed to work or all of that kind of stuff yeah uh, i mean if that decreases the chances like in order to find a mediterranean actor you're going to be looking for someone who's based in the uk more because of the truth yeah we won't want that so we aren't supportive of that so i don't like and if if we can, we'll definitely try to avoid uh, that having an effect on us. But also with it, we, we don't really know what the restrictions are going to be. So it's a really tricky kind of uh, time for everyone because a lot of the time we need, uh, we need actors from, you know, loads of different countries. And, and you know, it's a, such an, a kind of industry that spans over, over it's international. It, it needs to be that. So hopefully, from our perspective, we hope that it won't affect it. But again, we we don't. I don't really know. We don't really know. It's a bit. Would a that ultimately fall to the production companies or networks if they did have to follow some policy or visas yeah. or something? I guess it's up to them more than you. Exactly. So so for us, I mean, we wouldn't really have to have, like. Let's say, for example, I'm working on something at the moment. We we that films in. London, but there's also it films in New York as well. Um, so a lot of the time, the production company, based on how much money they have, they'll they'll say, we need uh, we need London-based actors only for these roles. Um, so it means like they can't afford to fly real Amer you know, Americans over. So we want Americans here. Um, so it kind of depends. Yeah, the power's kind of out, out of our hands, I guess. Um, it's whether they they allow people to travel but usually with Europe like even now um kind of if we, if we were to bring someone over from France or, or from you know somewhere in Europe they, they're usually uh, they don't we we don't kind of um that usually is okay or it, it kind of depends about it depends on the production and the role and how much money they have I guess okay yeah. I guess with Brexit we just don't know I guess that's the thing right like <laughs> Who knows with Brexit what's going to happen? I suppose right now, it's not even on the agenda, but exactly. I, it's a politics thing first. Um, yeah. It's an yeah. interesting question, though, because I haven't actually... I mean, obviously, we all... Um, when it first initially happened, everyone had a massive freak out about it. 
um, and then it kind of just went to one side, didn't it? Because Where... I, I did see on Spotlight, it was more theater projects, but there were around the initial freakout period, some Spotlight uh, breakdowns that said, we yeah. want people who have Irish passports because we need to tour in the in Europe. And so I think actors got a little freaked out when that started happening, but um, I, I don't know. I think, <laughs> I don't think it will necessarily, I mean, again, it, it, it depends how big the company is and how, how, how much money they have to spend and all of that. But yeah, it, it also depends how much flights will be and how <laughs> whether there's an effect on how much flights will be from different places and, where are you based, Fernando? Are you in England or are you in Spain? No, I'm in Spain. I'm based in Madrid. And this is a conversation I was having with my agent the other day because we haven't had that information about the Brexit and how is that going to affect. Obviously yeah. not to those uh, British productions that are going to be shot in, in Spain. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I wonder because so far we've been auditioning for some productions in the UK and yeah. we, were, we were wondering right now, like how is that going to affect us? Because I'm not a resident there, so... Yeah. And, but I guess I should keep going with my spotlight, spotlight and everything so far. <laughs> okay. I'd like you to tell us if you find me on. Yeah. <laughs> um, whilst Fernando's on, I have a question that other people have sent in that may be of interest to him anyway. I had a few people, uh, more Eastern European backgrounds, but they were asking, um, what would your advice be to people who aren't British or, or English native speakers? Would you say focus on roles specific to the country or accent that you have or would you say to them try and actually perfect a british accent and and, and go up for those kinds of roles as well how do you see it amy i think it's i think with um i think you've automatically got a um you're in a category of actors that um kind of has a unique unique selling point in that you have um you have uh, accent and language and you have um this thing that kind of creates a smaller pool of actors in if you know in in, in britain or in england um kind of thing so it, i'd say stick to what who you are and a lot of the time with acting i say kind of it's never going to be too far away from who you are and everything kind of comes from you um you know these characters we want to see you um portray this character um so i think it's i think it's also there's a lot of british actors so why kind of necessarily like i don't know whether we need kind of another uh if, if your british accent is perfect it might be useful to have that but i think you being spanish is gonna kind of sell you as um as with all the skills and and your nationality um so i think stick with stick with kind of who you are as much as possible um yes if you have other languages then put put them up and, and kind of flag them but i think we're automatically going to see know you as a Spanish actor, um, and that's going to be really useful for that for us because there might be a there are there might be a smaller pool in, of actors in 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 Britain or in London or in Spain who can come over. So I think stick with that. Does that help? Awesome. I think so. Right. Fernando, thank you so much, man. I know we didn't really answer the question, but I think it's because there's no answer to the question that you had in the first place. <laughs> It's a bit like now living, how long are we going to live in isolation? It's kind of like, who knows? Yeah. So let's see, let's see. Watch this, watch this face, I guess. Okay. <laughs> nice to meet you. Perfect. Yeah, very nice to meet you and thanks for having me. Thank you, Fernando. All right. Take okay. care. Enjoy. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Bye. It is a good question. I mean, I've always kind of thought about that, especially for me, because I'm a mix of a zillion things. Mm. And then it's like, well, I'm going to go for American yeah. or Spanish. I'm not, but that's like, why would I go in for British? I'm a British citizen, but I don't sound it. Yeah. And I think that was always an important thing to get my head around, like smaller yeah. pool, but actually when those roles come up for people like Fernando, yeah. you're going to be more in the, in the game, I suppose. And exactly. exactly. Um, and it, yeah, it's, 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 it's the same with accents. Like, you know, sometimes with accents, what if there's a Liverpool, Liverpoolian accent or Liverpool or Manchester? Really, first of all, we want to go to those genuine native Manchester Liverpool li accents because they're that they, they they have it. You know, that's them. That's all them. right, I'll stop practicing my scouse, Amy. Yeah. All right, <laughs> all right. There's my afternoon gun. Right, let's bring in Lucy, who's waiting. Uh, the last guest. Great, Lucy. 
Hello. Hello. Have... Oh, we can't hear you. No, you need to put your microphone on. There you go. Hi. <laughs> there we go. Hello. Hi, Lucy. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And yourself? Good, good, good. Welcome to the show. Say hello to Amy Rain Jackson. Hello. I want to go like this. <laughs> awesome. What's your question for Amy? Um, my question is about accent mm -hmm. and nationality um, because I'm Australian, Norwegian, English, but I sound like this, which is, I don't know, um, <laughs> slight Australian, I guess. But um, uh, would you prefer the actors come in the room with that the accent because most of the things I go for are RP or like, do you not want to know or do you want to know? Um, I think, as in, do you mean come into the room with your natural native accent? It, but, but if you were doing RP for the character? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think, I think um, you know, we always specify what accent to do um, in the room. So we'll say, you know, RP, American, you know, French, whatever that accent is. But I think, I mean, a lot of actors sometimes do come in the room with that accent. Um, but I also think as long as you can do that RP accent, uh, like you've, you know, you've said, or you, you can come in and, and show that, then I think that's, it's absolutely fine to come in with your normal, your normal kind of uh, natural accent. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that's, I think we were just talking about kind of accents and things and, and it's great that you, that you can do an RP accent, but I think stick, you know, again, you're, this is who you are. So come in as natural as possible. And it might make you even more nervous as well, coming into a room and having to kind of put on a more RP accent when you're kind of like nervous and, and not quite comfortable. So I think just come in naturally as yourself and and kind of perform in whichever accent we have specified. Okay, great. Fabulous. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. No problem. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I think we got through quite quite a lot there. I, I mean, there were more questions, but I think we've delved into more than enough for, cool. for uh, any actors that might listen. Um, so what I'm going to do just to wrap this off, because I did with all my guests, is super quick fire 10 questions if you're up for it, um, inspired by the good old Inside the Actor Studio. So if you know those questions, cool. Great. Uh, let's, let's dive into them. So the first question on uh, on James Lipton's list was, um, "What is your favorite word?" Green. Oh my gosh! Do you have to say it straight away? No. Well, I mean, let's not take twenty five minutes to figure it out, Amy. But okay, let me let's do that again then. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to edit this out. So, okay, Amy, what is your favorite word? Voluptuous. God damn! I was not expecting that. Yeah. Okay. That what is your least favorite word? Um, bleak. Mm. It's like a British sky, bleak. Yeah. Um, what turns you on in an emotional, intellectual, spiritual kind of sense? Um, someone being uh, someone being passionate or having a passion about something or something something or some person or who passion passion that might be what turns you off um lazy people so yeah lazy not having motivation not um yeah no. i'm gonna make five optional because question five is what is your favorite swear word and i get that for some people it might not be on brand so that's your call if you want to bypass it we can do my, a my favorite swear word is probably Hmm, it's a tricky one. I'd say dick, I use a lot. <laughs> I, I like the assist there. <laughs> there was definitely an assist. <laughs> um, I use that a lot, yeah. We'll take that, that yeah. works. Um, what is your favorite noise or sound? Ooh, um, noise or sound? A, um, uh, rain, rain on a like uh, roof, like a kind of glass roof, or oh, okay, 
conservatory something window or something unless you're wanting to sleep or something and it's just keeping you awake all the time like that would be annoying quite relaxing oh really I, yeah you know some people i was actually a director i worked with recently had um he listens to that noise um when he goes to sleep it's an app that has window on on like uh, oh my God. Uh, rain on what window rain on window window yeah. wind rain window app no there's an app for everything isn't there it's insane um what's your what's your least favorite sound or noise and i'm going to make an app for that now <laughs> my least favorite sound or noise is people um it's it's like um when someone's eating food and it like they they, they like ha like just like open their mouth loads and like squelch and it's all like disgusting like, oh, oh yeah my 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 performance brain is kicking in to go just do it <laughs> just do it now i'm just gonna no i know what you mean it is i had someone i used to live with or something um who yeah was really bad with that and i i just couldn't anytime i was sat at the table i was like nope I, I can't do this i've got to go fair play well kudos for not like you know punching them or something because it probably would have got really annoying um what profession would you most like to attempt other than what you obviously already do I would like to uh, look after uh, <laughs> look after monkeys in like a, oh, amazing a, somewhere beautiful in like the rainforest somewhere and like work with monkeys in the wild. See, this is the perfect time to pitch this with Tiger King and everything. Animal documentaries of the rage. Exactly. You should just don't be like that guy. Yeah, no. no. Have you seen it? Have you watched it? Well, I'm like halfway through. Oh, okay. Mad. Yeah. It's like just when you think it can't get more nuts, it does. I know. I mean, they're all just mad, aren't they? They're all like, it's, it's. Also, I, mean, I was talking to my friends about this and we were like, the editing is masterful. The way it's edited just oh leads God, the story. Yeah. Completely, completely. What, um, um, what profession would you most not want to attempt? Um, hmm. Think, I think I have massive kudos to um, police officers, but I just don't think I could do it. Mm. Well, so maybe that. I think, okay. I mean, you're going to get so much shit from people just yeah. beyond doing the job. I think I just cry too much. <laughs> it's a different angle to try and get people to do what you want to do, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. All right, the, the final question, which is the, the, the big old one he asked, I've put a different spin on it slightly, but it's you know, when, when it's all said and done, Amy, what would you like the story of your life to be? Oh, that's really nice. Um, I would like my story. I mean, right now it feels even more prevalent, like living, like, I don't even know if that was the right word. Did I use the right word? It's the right word. Let's just say it. Yeah, it's the right word. Um, right, right now with kind of not, seeing people or not having like connection with people so i guess my life would my life story would have to have lots of friends and people who love me and like families who i love and pe just lots of people surrounding me on my journey through life i think yeah yeah i think we're seeing that more and more with what's going on that the real value isn't in the labels or the job titles or all that although it's what we make and create is important it's yeah. can't share it with people yeah definitely oh amazing well look um last i guess moments to you really anything you want to shout about plug promote where people can contact you on social um you know the floor is yours just to kind of round yeah. it out here well it's yeah first of all thanks for having me it's been My pleasure. really really fun um and really nice to just kind of talk and have have a chat and kind of just get some things questions answered but also just have a have a talk about the industry and and what we're doing um yeah i mean social media i'm i'm on twitter i'm doing some we audition um i haven't done a huge amount of we auditions i did some spotlights this week but i'll be doing some more we audition chats next week so follow follow me on twitter and i'll i'll, I'll plug them um on there um and yeah nothing really nothing really else to plug i guess awesome I think insane and creative and proactive. That's our word of this podcast. I think proactive today. 
I think it is now. Okay, that's what I'm going to put on the banners. Be proactive. Amy Rain Jackson said it, so do it. Yes. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining. It's been a great chat and so many insights, I think, and hope a lot of people are going to get a lot out of it. Oh, fabulous. Thank you so much, Ashley. Awesome. Thank you.